Hi, this is Getting Real with Hillary, and this video is called What Can't You Say? So, yesterday, some of you know, I was, you know, I've been staying at my mom's for the summer. She has dementia. And it was really, um, some of my friends had remarked that I wasn't acting like myself. What's wrong? And I was like, I'm fine. I didn't, I, I didn't know I was acting different. So yesterday I went back, I tried to stay out all day. I went back to the house and, um, the woman that's living there, the caregiver was saying, you know, that it's really difficult, um, for her to be with my mom because my mom, just because of the way she is, she asked a lot of questions and she felt that she was being questioned, that her intelligence was getting questioned. Now I know that my mom just likes to ask questions, but in her mind, it was really difficult. She said, I've never questioned my intelligence before, but everything I do, are you sure that's the right answer? What if you're the wrong answer? What if we go this way? You know, everything, 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 and it never stops. And she goes, she goes, it's tough. And I was like, do you, I was like, do you really think so? She said, yeah. And I said, um, I, I've been feeling like I'm going crazy. I'm not supposed to use that word, but I am because it's appropriate. I, I said, I've been feeling like I'm going crazy. She goes, I understand. And I was like, oh, it's not me. And all of a sudden, all this pressure, I was like, oh my God, it's not me. Like, it's just hard. It's hard. Whew, I was thinking I should have this handled. I should know how to do this. I should be calm and nice and all that. So I went outside. I called a friend of mine. And I told her what was going on. And she said, you know, when I had her mother just passed away, but when her mother was, you know, she had some form of dementia and she would get very difficult. And my friend just told her, Hey, you got to stop doing that. You're going to drive everybody away. You're going to end up alone. You have to stop being mean. And I was like, he said that she goes, yeah. And I was like, wow. I, what I realized was, here I am needing my tissues that I felt sorry for my mom and I felt sorry for my dad when he was alive and I would never speak up and say something cause I didn't want to hurt them. I didn't want to hurt them, but who was I hurting me? And I would keep it all in, take it. It's like, almost like you're getting stabbed and you're just like, I'm fine. I'm fine. You're bleeding all over, but I'm fine. No problem. You don't want to say anything. I didn't want to say anything. So that's what I saw was my limit is that when I feel sorry for someone or I don't want to hurt their feelings, I'll just take it. I'll get hurt. I'll get stabbed. I'll get whatever. And I'll just be like, fine. But then I don't know why I want to run away. I was like, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I could stay here. I got to just run. And I didn't know what the problem was, but the problem was that I wasn't speaking up. I was afraid to say something. So I went back in the house and, um, so I'll just say what happened. My ex came over to pick something up. I was on the phone. I was still on my phone call and I, you know, I just waved. And then when he left, my mother said, Oh, well, you weren't very nice to Mark or you didn't give him very much attention. And I was like, I was on the phone. Well, I try to be cordial. And I was like, so I said, so, so this is where I said something that I would not normally say. I would normally just be pissed off and walk away. But I said, mom, are you trying to make me feel bad? What, why are you saying that? Saying what? She didn't remember what she said. So I kept saying, do you want me to feel bad? Well, I tried to be cordial. I said, I was cordial. I waved. I told him I was on the phone. I was cordial. He came by. I didn't invite him. 
I was busy. I was on the phone. So, but just having said that, I felt freer. Like, wow, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then later, I started talking to her about, you know, not everybody, not every family is in their kid's business. Uh, well, what do you mean? I'm just interested. I'm interested in, you know, your kids, your family, your, my children, my jam. I'm interested. And I said, yeah, but not everybody's like that. And, and she didn't really understand, but even so I felt good saying it. And then I said, you know, when you ask the same question over and over and over and over again, I said, it's difficult. It's difficult for me to be, to, to not have a hard time. So she said, well, I don't know that I'm doing it. So can you tell me? just kick me or something. And I was like, okay. But you know, what happened was, was that I spoke up. She was fine. I didn't hurt her feelings. She was fine. It gave me freedom to be around her, to talk to her, to not feel like I had a, you know, my usual is drink, eat or explode or run away or hide or something other than be with her because I don't know how much longer she'll be here. I don't want to not be around her. And when my father was alive, the same thing happened. I was afraid of him. I was afraid of him yelling, but in the last few months, I just gave all that up and I just spent time with him and it was really nice. And I was glad that I had that time with him. So I didn't know what was in the way between me and my mom. I think it was just I felt sorry for her and I didn't want to hurt her feelings, but really all she wants is to be connected to us and to have conversations and to talk. And so by being the way she was, I think it was driving people away and, um, instead of bringing them closer. So she would get like crazy and like chase after us and stuff. I mean, it was terrible. It broke my heart. Oh, but anyway, so I think this, no, don't feel sorry for me. I'm, this is creating freedom. Okay. I know some people, are, some people want to know if I'm okay after, after I record these videos. I'm fine. This is my process for freedom. So this is a good thing. But anyway, I can see that, you know, she, by, by doing what she was doing, she was driving, um, driving us away instead of bringing us closer. So I'm hoping that I can, you know, share what she said with my kids, my brothers and sisters, and, um, we can create some new affinity and being together in a whole new way. And it's only because I said what I, what did I say? What I, what I, what I didn't think I could say. I saw, I saw the limits to my communication and I leaped over the, the, the boundary that I had. So thank you. I know this is long, but it was important. I shared some of this on a call this morning and it made a difference for people. So that's why I'm sharing it with you guys in case you have someone that you're having trouble being with. See what you're afraid to say and say it anyway, because it will open something up in a miraculous way. So thank you. This is called Getting Real with Hillary. Um, don't forget the website, the blog, creatinglifeouthere.com, the book, The Second Piece of French Toast, available on Amazon. It's also available on Barnes & Noble if you choose that, I found out. So anyway, have a great day. Thanks for listening and keep creating freedom.